Welcome back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, here today in Tollsboro, Kentucky, at the Cabin Creek Covered Bridge. And I'm joined by Craig Stanfield, who knows a lot about this beautiful structure behind us. So, Craig, talk to us about the history and why it's important to you. Okay. First of all, let's talk about covered bridges, period. This is one of 11 remaining covered bridges in the state of Kentucky that are historic in, in age. Uh, seven of those are in a five-county Buffalo Trace area, Lewis, Fleming, Mason, Robertson, and Bracken. Also, though, there's two additional ones in Greenup County, which adjoins Lewis County. So nine of the 11 in the state are located in this area. And uh, they're very rare, of course, since there's only so few of them remaining. There used to be hundreds of them. And uh, as time changed, they, you know, came into disrepair and were bypassed and everything else, and there's just not that many of them left. This covered bridge was built around 1870, 1871. Now, I've seen histories, brief histories that said, you know, anywhere from 1867 to 1875. Well, Arnold Grayton and company from Ashland, New, New Hampshire, did the restoration of this. And uh, unfortunately, Meg Grayton, his wife, went and did some research, and she came into some data that previously was kind of, well, it wasn't unknown per se, but had been kind of overlooked. And um, uh, this roadway was approved in 1869 and uh, the turnpike, and then the bridge was approved for construction in 1870, which puts it construction somewhere between 1870 and 1871. And there's some local people here. Well, William Henderson owned the house behind here. Beautiful two-story house, been restored, looks great today, but it was in disrepair just a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, the people have done an excellent job, looks great. Um, he's actually buried in a small cemetery real close by as well. And his family still lives here, some of his family members. And they always thought that William Henderson built the bridge. Well, when Meg Grayton was here, she did some research and, it, and determined that a Bryant, Mr. Bryant from Ohio, which ultimately would have to pretty much be Josiah Bryant of Mount Oreb, was responsible for construction of the bridge. So it's going to upset a few people, but Probably Mr. Henderson may have coordinated with the construction. That's possible. And it was on his farm, and his name is mentioned in the, the works where it was approved for construction. So um, that's just the way I, I, I'm going to tell it as much as I can tell, you know, and that's, that's what we found out. So. All right. Now, we were, we were talking a little bit earlier. Talk to us about some of the internal parts of the structure, the metal, and maybe the dates around those. All right. The construction, like I said, dates to about 1870, 1871. And in 1907 to 1914, again, there are some discrepancies about when the construction was done. The Bower Bridge Company came in here, and they put in the arch, the laminated arch on either side, and they put in the iron tension rods. And... Uh, for a long time after that was done, when people started looking at this bridge, they considered it to be a child's truss because of the laminated arch. But when they realized that that was an addition, they determined that this is an actual King's Post construction truss bridge. And the, the child's truss does incorporate the arches, but that was not original to this bridge. So they left them when they did the restoration for, well, because both of those things were done to improve the weight bearing capacities of the bridge okay. and to make it last longer and so they and it would have been terrible to have taken the arches out i mean they're they're a beautiful piece oh, beautiful. as well uh but um but that's just a little extra history yes all right well so let's talk about what this bridge means to craig okay <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm, in, I'm enamored with it. I've yeah. been down here and taking pictures of it for many, many years. Uh, I own two original artworks by two very well-known artists of, of the bridge. Uh, Steve White, uh, a very prominent Maysville artist, uh, whose wife was born on this, this creek. And he's done some other paintings around this creek. But he did a, uh, he did a print in 1978. Well, prior to doing that print, which was his first one he had printed, he did, well, that, of course, there was a painting before the, 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 the print. But uh, prior to that, he was actually um, commissioned to do a couple of paintings of the bridge. And uh, one of those came into my collection a few years ago. And I'm very proud to have it because um, I can't afford Steve White Originals, really. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a very large scale 1970, 1977 era painting. Um, and it's the uh, side view. The print that he did was the portal view, the view from the front. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. So mine's, mine's actually not 
out there. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a painting that I have that uh, is an original, but there were never prints made off of it. Now, we were talking earlier, you have some remnants, right, uh, yeah. from... Yes, when Arnold Grayton did the construction, the re reconstruction, uh, he was also responsible for removing all the, mer all, the, all the trash from the property. And, of course, there were a lot of um, timbers that were so disintegrated that they had to be replaced, and he allowed me to have several pieces of it. I think I've got eight pieces, which uh, Donald Walker was... Uh, uh, one of one of his main contra contractors he was on top of the thing and he said oh help yourself go over there and get you some pieces and i said oh really he said yeah and he told me they were splice blocks and what splice blocks were that's kind of like um oh kind of like the uh the lincoln logs they're the little flat pieces that had the little knots on the ends yeah. well that's that's a splice block basically um they were put in place to join two timbers together and make the length longer because it was hard to find a tree that's 114 feet long because <laughs> that's the bridge the bridge length it's it's 114 feet long and it's uh 20 i have to check on that 20 feet nine inches or 21 feet nine inches and it ties 20 feet nine inches in width and it ties with the bennett's mill bridge which is the longest one remaining in kentucky as the widest so it it has that distinction as well the renovation was required because in 2008, well, first of all, let's go back a little further. In 1983, they closed the bridge to vehicular traffic because they built a new bridge over here, a concrete bridge, okay. and bypassed this one, okay, and uh, because of its condition. And uh, it continued to deteriorate. They had done some work in the 80s, early 80s, uh, to, uh, to keep it, but uh, determined that it was just best to bypass it just because of the stress it was taking from heavier vehicles, and that's that and the other. And uh, so they closed it to vehicular traffic in 1983. In 2008, it was heavily damaged by flood. I mean, severely damaged by flood. It took out some of the abutments or damaged some of the abutments that are the stonework that holds it up. Um, and at that point in time, it was determined that if they were going to save it, they're going to have to get onto it. So a few years later, they put a steel structure all the way through this, which I've got some pictures of when that was in place. And it basically held up all the weight to where the bridge could be sustained until such time as money became available for the renovation. And then in 2000, and that was, those, those were added in 2011 or 12. And in 2013 and 14, they actually began the renovation of the bridge of one point two million dollar project I mean this wasn't small money um, and uh, and and completely you know made it the beauty, beauty that we see today yeah. took it from I've got pictures when it was not the beauty that it is today so a lot of the siding was gone you know there was a lot of damage and um, so they did a great job restoring our bridge we're really happy about it Craig what else is significant about the bridge this bridge was listed as all covered bridges in the state of Kentucky that were remaining at that time on the National Register of Historic Places in 1976. And in 1975, it was added to the properties deemed worthy of preservation by the Kentucky Heritage Council. So it's, it's been in the works for a long time. It's, 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 you know, it, it's been recognized as a long time, I guess is what I should say, as a historic structure. Yes. Well, Craig, is there anything that we haven't touched on yet here uh, that you might want to share? Any any other little secrets that you might know about this since you are so familiar? I'll tell a story about Mike Denham. He is our state representative, well, former state representative. And he told me a story about when he was a youngster, he was taking a load of tobacco across. This was, of course, before 1983 when they closed its vehicle traffic. And he, he came across the bridge and it, his tobacco load was too tall to go through and he got stuck. He got wedged. He actually had to let the air out of his tires to go through. <laughs> he told that that story uh, coincidentally uh, at a at a meeting later on and I thought that was cute yeah that's one way to do it <laughs> yes. okay all right very nice well Craig thank you so much for being able to share that with us today yeah, I'm glad you're here we we enjoy the bridge and hope everybody else enjoys this video oh well <laughs> Tolsboro is beautiful so far I can't wait to uh, spend some more time here today thank you you're welcome to stay as long as you can okay. Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, here today in Tolsboro, Kentucky, at the Cabin Creek Covered Bridge. Craig Stanfield, thank you so much for having us here. Glad you're here. We enjoyed your stay and hope you enjoy your stay while you're here. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Thank you. Mm -hmm.